Well, hello, my name is Judy Sanchez. Um, I am originally from Colombia. Uh, I came to the US um, at age 11. And like every immigrant with their families, um, I came here for a better life. So uh, recently in June, I received my bachelor's degree in architecture at Spitzer School of Architecture in City College. Um, but yeah, before achieving this milestone, I went to different colleges um, that enlightened me with uh, unique experiences and perspectives um, towards my character and uh, my career goals. So that's great. You have a very unique perspective on architectural education because you've been to several architecture schools. Which schools did you go to? So my journey began unknown steps, if I could say. Uh, when I started college uh, in Queensboro Community College, I didn't know exactly what to major in. So it was um, kind of like an unknown uh, journey in a way. But I knew that whatever the outcome will come, will be kind of like embracing uh, a practice where it can be enjoyful and, uh, you know, be, be fed with passion. And uh, it took me a year to, to discover what I wanted to do in Queensboro, but eventually once I decided to uh, go for architecture, I spent three years to get my associates uh, in Queensboro. Um, and after that, I, I have to transfer. By that time, there was no other option, but I have to transfer to NYIT. Uh, the, I wanted to transfer to Spitzer by the time, but the process was complicated uh, because there were not enough credits for design. So they, it was just complicated for me to transfer to, to Spitzer. So I just went to NYIT. And I stayed there for three years and I have to transfer to City College because of economy issues. And yeah, that's very much. So when you compare NYIT, uh, the BART program at NYIT and the City College program at Spitzer, uh, which one did you like best and why? Mm -hmm. So they both offer me unique uh, lessons. Um, NYIT was leaning towards more technical aspect. Uh, there was a lot of emphasis of uh, construction, drawings, uh, analysis, precedence. Um, but I guess that in, in Spitzer, once I transferred to, to, to Spitzer school, I there was more like freedom in some sort of way, like they didn't get stuck into constructional drawings, but, or a, a majority like uh, emphasize on uh, analysis, but it was mostly about like uh, discovering the, the concept um, through drawing and uh, look around on the site and use other elements to inspire your concept and ideas. So they emphasize, they go right away with the concept and they didn't get, um, they didn't get stuck with uh, too much analysis on it. So that will be probably like the, the best part that I like it. And also the, the use of different softwares. Um, when I was in NYIT, I used majorly Revit and AutoCAD uh, Rhino. Uh, but in once uh, when I, study in Spitzer, I started to expand myself and use more Grasshopper. Uh, we use uh, GIS, um, ArcGIS, and something that I didn't even know that it exists in, in YIT. Um, but all these elements, these programs were uh, used to expand our concept uh, journey in a way. So what's your, uh, your goal for your career? What uh, goals have you set for yourself as an architect? Right. So I am a person that is obsessed with networking. And it's, if I will define like a common denominator among all the designs that I've been doing, uh, it's about connecting, um, creating connections between the surroundings um, of the place of interest. And in that case, that is the site, right? Uh, not only physically, but also sociocultural. There is a lot of things that, you know, it's 
you don't see it from a program, from a specific program, but you go to the site and discover, learn from the people, the community living there. So my goal in, in this career is to create these networking, different uh, connect, connecting people, connecting neighborhoods, be inspired by the site, by the elements, the clues that it gives, and in order to understand more and create a, a, or a better connection. And what tools uh, that has architecture school offered you that will allow you to get closer to your goal? Right, so we, I mean, a lot of GIS, ArcGIS, uh, it's a, a powerful tool that maybe can show you like a very deep information of what is going on on the site. But also there are like other resources, outside resources, websites um, that they have statistics in a way. But I think that lately, especially in Spitzer, I've been introduced to this uh, kind of uh, like different perspective of going to the site, like visit the site and interview, observe what, what is going on, uh, the, you know, the dairy life of people living in there and kind of like recording a sketch uh, how how is that affecting their lives in a way? So I think that all these combinations of personal experience with the information that you find with all these softwares uh, can help you to uh, influence the design and create connections. Right. Um, as far as your background, you said you're Colombian. You feel that you've had uh, an opportunity to bring some of the Colombian influence, the Colombian culture into your work over the years? Yeah, I think that um, what I identify as Colombians is that we're very, we want to help, right? And it's all like in our blood, like in our parents, my parents, my grandparents, and everyone in Colombia has this desire to do something for someone. And that has been like the main um, drive for me. And when I'm in architecture, um, I don't want to just design or create spaces, but I want to do that with the purpose to help, right? To enhance the conditions, uh, create justice. And, you know, in this moment that we are uh, going through difficult situations, um, there's an, a need of caring. And I believe that architecture can be that instrument to heal um, and not just like segregate uh, or redlining in a way, if I could say that, put it that way. But that's the, the, the feeling, right? The character of the Colombian, which is uh, helping others and bring joy uh, to, to the people around us that we know. Um, you mentioned before that for economic reasons, you had to change from NYAP to transfer to City College. So how do the two compare in terms of tuition, in terms of uh, the economics? Right. So in NYIT, uh, it's it's a private university, right? And it's it's been a long time, but it's a very like uh, a very high price tuition, if I could say. They offer you uh, a scholarship, but that first of all, like that depends on your GPA, right? Uh, the amount of that scholarship. And um, it, it is still not enough. So you have to find other resources, like, uh, you know, not only uh, gather FASFA and uh, on loans, and eventually other scholarships if you uh, find. Um, but in my case, I already spent four years in Queensboro Community College, right? So all my FASFA went to that. And I only four have years. two you years. You spent four years. Yes, so only in the community. It college. wasn't. It wasn't only two years. It was four whole yes, years for four an years. for an associate's degree. Yes, because uh, one Isn't year it supposed remember? to be two. Yes, it's for a normal regular major, but in architecture, if you want to, you know, if you focus on architecture, usually you take three years. I see. And adding on top of the year that I didn't know uh, what to do, but. Uh, I already spent four years in community college, and that means spending FASFA. I only have two years left of right. FASFA. So, and, yeah. so you graduated uh, this past June, correct? Yes. From City College. Um, mm -hmm. What have you been doing since then? Have you do you have any jobs lined up, or are you looking? Or yes, yeah, so I'm in the process of uh, looking, searching, and um, 
also like uh, creating my own content like in my own website to promote myself what's the and, website uh, it's still in the works right now okay but it's it will be released soon awesome mm -hmm. um and uh what types of firms are you applying to let's say so, as, a, as an example give us a, a sense of like what's what's your favorite firm what who would you like to work for so i'm i'm looking for firms that uh, are working with transportation design transportation so i apply to uh, skidmore mm -hmm. uh, because they have like a program uh, that dedicates to design a city like the, there's this working one year junior and i was interested to that so i applied to that i and i applied to also i've been connecting with the uh new york new york seaport authority and uh, I applied to DLR group um, and I'm waiting for another or other firm. Uh, it's not on top of my head, but those are like the main firms that I wanted to, to apply. It's exciting. Um, are you, um, do you have other friends of yours who are also in the process of uh, finding their first job and how are they doing? So yes, uh, my, I mean, there is a majority of them, they already uh, have their jobs, but there's also a part, you know, that they're still looking for it and they're in that process as well. Um, but, you know, just as like any like hiring process, uh, you need to have a lot of patience. So yeah, we're in this process. Is this a, a good time to look for, for a job in architecture or is it, is it, is there a recession? I mean... Mm -hmm. There's actually no. It's, I, I've seen really a lot. Of... It's not really a recession. You know, it's more of an inflation. Yeah. It's not really a recession, but yeah. But is uh yeah? It's is it a, an okay time to look for a job? Yeah, there's a lot of options out there. I've seen you know the, all these resources in Archinect or Link, um, and other like websites that they still offer. There's yeah, they still offer positions and. If they vary, you know, uh, internships to one year entry level. So it's it, there's there's still hope. There there's a lot of jobs. So there. so how does City College help uh, one of their students to find a job or connect with a career during mm -hmm. during their studies during your studies? Mm -hmm. Did City College somehow connect you with alumni? Was there a program there that helped you build relationships with companies? or some kind of an internship uh, program, something like that? Yes, so there is a lot, they do a lot of things. So one, they have their website, uh, it's career and job. And it's, it's you have to have your own account and you just apply and look for firms that post the jobs. That was like one thing. The other method is the own uh, uh, dean or advisor. In the, our case is uh, Michael, he, he sends emails that uh, you know forward he's been forwarding emails with job opportunities and that's a big help because that's how I got my second internship and um and so then how, ma how many internships did you get prior to uh, finishing your uh, uh I got yes I got one that uh it was it lasted like a one year but this was like outside of Spitzer uh, when I was in Spitzer, I got an, uh, another one. So I already, I have two in total, but yeah, the and second you, one, I got it from Michael. Oh, you got it through your, yes. uh, the, through the Dean? Yes, through the Dean. So Michael is who? What's his last name? <laughs> uh, Michael Miller. It's, okay, so Michael Miller is the, the Dean of, uh, of Spitzer School of Architecture? Uh, he, yeah, he's, I think he, he's associate to the Dean, so the assistant, dean. yeah. And he's, um, uh, he basically, the way that the school helps with internships, et cetera, is by basically like a family, kind of like you guys mm -hmm. help each other, whatever you know, you kind of forward emails to each other. That's it. There's exactly. no more, uh, there's nothing like an official office that deals with trying to network you, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And what's the tendency of most people in terms of like which firms do they, do most people prefer to work for? Is it the... The usual ones like the star architects and things like that uh i will say yes maybe like you know because it's it's interesting uh 
but there's like other you know not everyone has the same taste so they work in smaller firms uh maybe like even freelance you you know it's uh it actually the it's according to preferences but um but yeah it's, it doesn't have to be always like the star architects right. firm. how was new york as a place to study architecture it was it was good uh i guess that new york is very diverse right mm -hmm. so i i went from you know midtown to uptown but it's it's more like flexible you know it's you know you have a transportation and it's it's very enjoyable i would say yeah yeah but what about uh new york as a canvas of architecture itself uh is it uh is that helpful the fact that you you are exposed to building sites and buildings and things like that or yes fun? yes it's um i guess like in the projects in terms of sites you you're able to go out and learn from them right like walk around and i guess that's what makes new york enjoyable where that you the fact that you can walk um and a block for us 20 blocks is nothing <laughs> Uh, so it's like, you know, you walk, you learn, and obviously a lot of architecture around you. And you learn a lot by looking at it and looking at the context around it. How do you learn as an architecture student in general, not just as Spitzer? Uh, what, what was your experience? Like, um, I have this theory that most of the stuff that we learn in architecture school, I used to be an architecture student myself. Uh, is through your your peers, through the other tech students. They're basically your professors. Um, so what's what's your perspective on that? Right. So obviously that makes a big part of that. Uh, they know things that you don't might not know, and you learn from them. But I think that also uh, your your story, you know what what's going on in you, what what happens. Because in the end of the day, architecture is not just like a, it should or it shouldn't be just like a career option, but it has to have a purpose. And I think that architecture has that power, if I could say, um, to do something, to make an impact. And in my case, I, I have a lot of experience with um, in terms of like, you know, personal situations that, um, you know, have witnessed a lot of hospitals and all of this. And you see a lot of spaces that, you know, is screaming uh, that they they have to be improved in some sort of way. So that's that was like my um, how it affects me, uh, my experiences in a way, and the determination to continue. You know, to know why I want to be an architect. Right. So the how, so you spent um, about uh, what was it one year, two years at the at Spitzer, correct? Uh, I in Spixer I spent uh, four four years. Oh, four years. I yeah, because I went back to I have to repeat two years back. So I I left but NYT. You did, in, but you did and what? So you did four years at the community college, then you did two years at NYIT and four years at Spitzer. Yes. So you did eight. You did ten years. Uh, yes. Try and study architecture. Yes. And you were paying tuition. All these ten years. Yes, yes. Uh, in the beginning, uh, FASFA was hel helping me and loans, but in the end, in Spitzer, I was on my own. Uh, a scholarship show up, so I that helped me oh, a little you bit. You got it. You got yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. So <clears throat> the reason for that was that you uh, you felt that you you were not able to get into a to like Spitzer or or uh, NYAT right away that's why you because of lack of grades or because you were from what exactly what was the reason why you used yeah so basically lack of credits design credits but, um, but, but uh, why did you decide to go to community college instead of regular uh architecture school i didn't know what i wanted to do uh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know exactly that, you know, I want to be an architect right away. Uh, yeah, it took my time <laughs> to decide. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it ends up, um, so, so considering the, the entry level uh, positions and how much they, they pay, 
in New York City or whatever. And then considering the expense that you go through to study architecture, do you feel that uh, the two balance each other or there's a misbalance somewhere? Uh, there can be a misbalance, I will say. Uh, it's, I mean, some firms, some firms uh, offer like a good compensation, but others, unfortunately, they, they just don't, they're very like restricted, right? And that, that's the reality. And that's, that's why it's, it's, you have to be careful what to apply and ask. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's what it is. It's not, yeah. So what, what's your expected salary? Like, what would you be happy with as an entry level uh, junior architect now? Um, I will say like between 65,000 and even up to 70,000. 65 and 70. And yeah. uh, and the, your average annual tuition at your school, the schools that you went to was how much? Oh, this, I guess, uh, how yeah, much? Well, did, if I, if I may ask, how much did you end up spending in total for your education so far? Oh my gosh! Uh, like in total, like counting all the colleges, like um, I will say like hundreds of dollars. I don't know because <laughs> it's it's. Yeah, like, I mean, it, there's combining the, all these expenses and also the loans, too, that I have to repay back. Right. Uh, and, uh, but Sp Spitzer was, like, lower, so it helped me a little bit. But it's still money. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, like, a lot of money. How much is uh, Spitzer per year? So a year, well, per semester, I was paying like almost five thousand dollars, I think. Oh, that's it. I remember, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was good, you know. Con oh, because you had your 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 scholarship, right? Yeah, scholarship, and I was working too. Like I save a lot of money, so it's yeah, that's combination of yeah. yeah. So, so you managed to reduce it as much as you could to make your mm -hmm. uh, you know, to to be able to go through your your education. And what's your favorite subject of all of the subjects that you took, then, including studio, all the software, and uh, all the adjacent courses, building technology, history, mm -hmm. or, or, uh, art history, whatever? You know, there's, uh, there's this new practice. It's called, I think it's Black Practice, Fugitive Practice, and Spitzer. And it, it brought me a different perspective, like unlike any other classes that teach you history like typical history architecture or anything uh it um it taught me like primitive uh practices mm -hmm. with uh natives uh the natives and also black african people how they live how they survive yeah and that that was my favorite class it brought me a different perspective because of the fact that it introduced you to 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 what to the uh uh to, traditional ways of doing creating architecture yes right. yes mm -hmm. and um is that something that interests you kind of looking at research or looking at history or maybe researching yes. the past to learn about the future yes yes definitely um again we're all like surrounded by elements variables uh so it's it's important to have in mind everything and right. I, I just yeah, I just don't want to create, you know, superimpose. I, I want to connect. Um, as far as the professors at uh, Spitzer, what did you think of them? Um, what, uh, where did they come from? What schools did they attend? What, uh, what was their approach to teaching? Right. Uh, there was actually a couple of few professors that uh, were teaching NYIT and Spitzer at the same time. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I was... Uh, they they taught well. They have a different approach in terms of like finishes or how or reuse, adapt and reuse uh, environmental as well. Um, and that was like other uh, professors that wanted to use like all these uh, softwares like Grasshopper or Ladybug um, and other softwares that are uh, entitled into climate weather temperature and in order to create spaces that you know are more like uh, passive mm -hmm. and uh, are more yes environmental friendly 
and um, I and the the professors that uh, look into like primitive and native practices. Um, so they have different backgrounds, and I and that that's what I love the bi variety of practices, and they all have to offer different things. What about the facilities, Spitzer? What do you think of the, the building? I know that, I mean, I'm familiar with the Rafael Vinelli building. It's a beautiful building. Um, yes. Does it work well? Do you feel, did you feel at home there, comfortable? Uh, definitely. Uh, when I transfer again from um, Manhattan campus and NYIT to Spitzer, it was a huge transition uh because everything is was big right uh it's very yeah. the studio space is very sp spacious and there's like a sense of community and that's what i really like about it and yeah students are always there to help each other so that's i i really felt comfortable so you feel that uh, at spitzer students helped each other more than uh or did they there is a reputation about some architecture schools, uh, some students that I've spoken with, that there's a lot of competition. Did you experience that at Spitzer or not? Uh, I experienced that more in NYIT, uh, yeah. but yeah, but it's- So at it's NYIT, been... were you in the Manhattan campus or the- Yes, yes Manhattan. Where you were? Yeah, okay. So, mm -hmm. so you experienced it more there. Okay, go on, mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah, no, and uh, it's, but it's actually motivation. Uh, huh? I'll, I'll, and, and in Spitzer, like that's what I got from it. It's more motivation, like, you know, motivate me to push myself further and, uh, you know, produce uh, what uh, the best that I can, right? So it was motivating in a way. That's how it felt. So you feel that competition works better than collaboration? Uh, in some cases, I will say honestly, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but um, I mean, collaboration, you have like good positive things. Um, you're helping each other, but competition, it actually like motivates you. So it's, yeah. I guess you need both. Yeah, no, yeah, certainly. I, I work a lot with other uh, people in Spitzer and NYIT and you're, you're there for each other. Describe the students at uh at Spitzer and uh, I mean, if you remember NYT, but Spitzer, um, what? meaning, you know, you come from Colombia, you have an immigrant background. Uh, is that, does that describe most of the students there or were there students from very different backgrounds? Right, uh, it's actually, the, there is a lot of uh, diversity. Um, I've seen, you know, there is a lot of uh, people from Asia, uh, uh, of Egypt, uh, the Western uh, Europeans as well, mm -hmm. and obviously like Hispanic uh, the, uh, students. So we there is there was a lot of there is the diversity in in Spitzer, and obviously each of us like brought has something to to bring. So it's you learn a lot from each, Do you from feel each that other. Diversity in the student body is important, or just oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Why? Because they, you know, there are things that you cannot ju uh, just see by your own. Mm -hmm. uh, you need like different, you need to listen to other uh, people. And I think that diversity, that's what it brings. Uh, it brings topics that, you know, they're not visible to you right away. And they actually express how they feel, you know, what is actually going on. And it's like a mind opening and it's, it's, it's important, you know, as an architect, if we want to be inclusive, uh, we want to be able to, uh, you know, cooperate and open our arms to eventually work together. When you were applying to architecture school, uh, did you have to prepare a portfolio or something like that? Uh, yes. So, and well, in Spitzer, uh, there was like a challenge. So I have to fill it out and uh, may have a small portfolio and also a, make that challenge, which is like drawings, a series of drawings. Yeah. Uh, so, was, so what kind of drawings were those? 
uh, it's mostly like about imagining uh, spaces. Like how would you imagine, you know, this space uh, in, from your perspective? How would you, you will draw yourself for instance as well, um, you know, in, in a different unique way. So it's like perceiving the world around you from your perspective and how you express that through the, the pen and paper. So you had to complete these challenges and submit them along with your portfolio or you had to do it in an enclosed uh, timed environment? Uh, no, I have to submit everything together. Yeah. So, and yeah. uh, your portfolio, uh, what did you think about uh, the preparation of the portfolio? Was it easy for you? Was it natural or was it uh, It. The, the thing with the portfolio is that it's like ongoing process. So, yeah, and it's still an ongoing process with me. Uh, but obviously, like you, you take the, the basic concept of layouts, right? And uh, be selective and uh, be very precise. So I just try to follow that uh, formula, I will say, just be like, you know, show the best work that I have in a very organized way. And yeah. So overall, is City College a school that you would recommend to other people? Yes. So, well, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's been such a, a 